we're in completely new territory in our brain. And because we're in completely new territory, we're rewiring the brain, literally reconnecting to a new concept. Then ultimately, it changes us from the inside out. If I change my mind, will I change my choices? If I change my choices, will my life change? Why can't I change? What am I addicted to? What will I lose that I'm chemically attached to? And what person, place, thing, time, or event that I'm chemically attached to that I don't want to lose because I may have to experience the chemical withdrawal from that? Hence the human drama. This life is but a page in an enormous book in which we will always be who we are, but always with the inherent needling of ambitious pursuit, a pursuit that takes us from the boring tedium of self-reflection of self-hate and to self-creation of new dreams. And we are ambitious gods. It's the only planet in the Milky Way that has habitation that is steeped in enormous subjugation of religion. You know why that is? It's because people have set up right and wrong. I did say there is no right and wrong. Does that mean that it's a free for all? Absolutely not. I mean, the problem that I have with right and wrong in those categories is not that I want to free for all, but that right and wrong doesn't go nearly far enough. They have never sinned. They have never wronged. Wronged, yes, in moral confrontations with society, but that's their adversity. That's why they're here, to wrong, to learn, to search, and use the wisdom of that to create yet greater dreams. There's nobody keeping records up there. The records are here, and I'm going to have to deal with them. That's far more painful than a record-keeping god up in the skies. So anyone who's setting out on the path of enlightenment will be absolutely impeccable in everything that they do. Is it because of fear of damnation? No. Or of the punishment of God? Or because I have sinned and haven't got forgiveness? No, no, no. I mean, these are all excuses that keeps us away from the real problem. The really uh, enlightened person will see every action has a reaction with which I must deal. And if I'm wise, I'm not going to do stuff that will cause me to have to face it and resolve it and balance it in my soul later. That's the real criterion. That God or the, the fundamental level of reality, depending on what people describe, it really, I mean, theoretically, it should be everywhere. Uh, it's something, you know, exactly how it would manifest or, or how God would manifest in the world uh, is a more complicated issue. But uh, I think that, that certainly from a more traditional religious perspective, pe people have kind of gotten away from God the, the person. There's been a great shift from God up there or out there or in there, wherever, to the God within, and that's, an improvement, but we don't want to get some idea that, that, that God can be within and still be separate, which is what most people think. They think the God within is like some of those alien movies, you know, where some being breaks out from my chest. God is not within in that uh, stupid sense. What it means is uh, that in God we live, move, and have our being, that we ourselves, in fact, are divine. What's the relation between my God self and your God self? There is no relationship because it's only one God self. It's in both of us. All people are divine people. Is it not ironic that all would say that this is the voice of the devil or that this is heresy? If this is heresy, then what is promised to everyone is an imbuement with God that is inseparable. Knowledge allows the brain to begin to become wired, and we will begin to see what has always existed 
but because we live in those routine automatic programs, we're unable to see because we're processing mind from the familiar. To learn knowledge means we're learning new things. And to learn new things means we're gathering information and creating the circuitry now to begin to develop the sensitivity, to begin to see things for the first time. There is enormous potential to change the kind of behaviors and characteristic patterns that we've fallen into. In fact, if you've listened and have remembered anything that I've said, your physiology is different than it was before that. That is something that Eric Kandel, the recent winner of the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Science, said very eloquently at a talk, that basically memory has been encoded, your genetic structure has changed, and while we previously would talk about the nervous system as this very rigid thing that didn't have much capacity for change, we now know that on many levels, that isn't true. And actually, there's a tremendous amount of plasticity, which basically means ability to change within the nervous system. And if you look at the structure of the human brain in detail, you see that it's actually it's specifically designed, it's carefully engineered to experience the unified field, to experience the unity of life. We are all connected. I mean, I think the most fundamental thing is we're all connected by an energy field. We swim in a sea of light, basically, which is the zero point field. And I say, first of all, you have to get to, you get away from the whole idea of separateness because separateness is the biggest problem of the world now. You take this notion of an entangled universe and you apply it to human experience because human experience is part of the universe as well. And then you say, well, let's, let's assume that experience is entangled, then how would it manifest? and we can start going through ways in which it could manifest. If there's a connection with another mind, we call it telepathy. If there's a connection to some other object somewhere else, we'd call it clairvoyance. If there's a connection that happens to transcend time, we'd call it precognition. If there's a connection in which my intention is expressed out in the world some way, we might call it psychokinesis or distant healing or something of that sort. So you can go through a list of perhaps 12 kinds of psychic experience that have gotten labels over the years, like telepathy, but this is really just the tip of the iceberg. People ask, why are you so interested in the Planck scale, the very ultimately tiny, in terms of spirituality? Because obviously, spirituality is, is out there, it's, it's everywhere. And the answer is that, yes, the Planck scale is the ultimately small, but it's also everywhere. Wherever you go, there it is. And because it's holographic, it repeats at different scales, like fractals, throughout the universe. I would say that what quantum physics is to the 20th century, whatever is going to be the new bridging of science and spirituality, that will be to the 21st century. We are all creating the future. We are all creating what is outside of us. None of us are innocent in that regard. There's something out there we don't like. We can't really turn our backs on it because we're co-creators somehow or other. And we have to do the right things to try to get the future that is best for all of us. We have talked so far about the freedom of our own personal life and quantum physics that we are freeing and freeing and freeing our reality to ultimate realities. Yes, of course they exist. But after we have accomplished them, what then, what next? When do we make the shift from me to one? When are we the subconscious mind? When are we the knowledge of the one transpersonal self? When you start to realize what your true nature is, there is no question, there is no answer anymore. And there is just sudden realization. Now you come back from the rabbit hole and you start to perform in this world of illusion and wonder and magic with that understanding that you were never gonna die and you were never born. Choice by consciousness out of this possible events, the actual event of experience comes in. 
And so, for the first time, science encounters free will. Consciousness is free because there is no mathematical description of the subject. Only objects can be described mathematically, and only to the extent that there are possibilities. The question still remains paramount, who is the chooser? Are all realities existing simultaneously? Is there a possibility that all the tensors exist side by side? Flatland, a world of only two dimensions. Only forwards and backwards, left and right. In this world, there is no up and no down. I said to Ray, where's Dotty? He said, well, she's out in line. I said, well, uh, huh? What the bleep is that thing? Huh? In this world, the two-dimensional beings that live here have no concept of three-dimensional objects. These two-dimensional flatlanders have no understanding of cubes, spheres, tetrahedrons, or yours truly. From their 2D perspective, my 3D finger looks something like this. <laughs> Hello, little circle. Uh -uh. Fear of the unknown. Or should I say, not yet known. It's a puzzle. If we see only what we know, how does anyone ever see anything new? The unknown. How do we ever get out of our box? Hello, little circle. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Who said that? Where are you? This is always the tricky part to explain. I'm in another dimension, another space. I am above you. Ah! No, never, never use that word. What word? Above? Ah! <laughs> it's forbidden! <laughs> well, what do you think it means? I don't know, and I don't want to know. You can be severely punished if you use that word. <gasps> Are you a ghost? <laughs> I hope not. I just have a different perspective than you do. I can see things in a way you can't yet. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, okay, you have a safe hidden in your pantry. <laughs> and inside it, you have 12 coins, a will, and a passport. How did you know that? What are you? Are you a god? <laughs> well, no more than you. You see, since I am above you, <laughs> in the third dimension, I can see inside things in your world. Third dimension? You are a crazy ghost. There's only two. Look. So, if I were to touch the inside of your stomach, how would I do that? Well, you'd have to cut through my skin. Otherwise, it's impossible. Ready for more? More what? Dimensions. Oh. Directions. Uh, no. Yes, but, oh. But there aren't any. More? 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 
What will happen to me? What will I become? You'd have to become it to know. Okay. Excellent. Isn't it funny? That which we are most afraid of is what thrills us the most.